GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers. This is Young from Chuyong's Kennel with my boy Jaguda, the warrior, the survivor. Keep watching GH Dog TV for more dog content. Thank you. Greetings, my name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger, and this is GH Dog TV, your number one dog TV for all dog lovers. If you're new on our channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. On today's episode, we are visiting a Presa Canario kennel, and I'm sure you're loving the scenes right here. So don't go anywhere, stick and stay as we get right into today's episode. Just as I told you today, the current location is East Legon Hills in the Greater Accra region of Ghana. And today I'm visiting a Presa Canario kennel. The name of this kennel is Brut Canario. Brut Canario. But then before um, I even introduce my guest for today's show, big ups to all of our viewers and our subscribers around the world. So before we even start, just get into the comment section and let us know which country you're watching as from and if you are also new on our channel i kindly urge you to kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing door content now allow me to introduce my guest for today's show boss man welcome to the show thank you boss it's great seeing you once again i think the last time was at the kug octagon show yeah the december show how have things been? Uh, you know, the way things have been in Ghana, it's been been a bit on and off, but uh, we thank God for life. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. nice one, boss man. I'd like you to officially introduce yourself to my dog lovers. Okay, so uh, my name is Nana Kwame. I'm a breeder of uh, Presa Canario. Uh, I do have some few cane courses, but mainly I'm a breeder of Presa Canario. Yes, uh, some people call me Mr. Brute. Uh, just because I'm selling pressure calories everywhere I go, you know, I'm just crazy about this breed. Uh, so I think largely, uh, I've, I've been in the dog business for quite some time now. Uh, I've always been fascinated with dogs as a child. Uh, but as a business, uh, I started it around uh, 2018. Yes, so I've been around for quite some time now. Yeah. Wow. And wow, dog lovers, check out this magnificent boy right here now boss man so let's start with the name brut canario the first time i saw the name online I've, the first time i chanced upon your dog's voice on instagram brut canario there's some sort of power in the name <laughs> can you tell us how you came about with that name okay so uh, everyone who knows a presser canario knows that uh, the presser canario is not your average dog so the name of the kennel is to give you an indication of what you are getting if you decide to buy a Presa Canario, if you decide to own a Presa Canario. It basically tells you that you are getting a very strong dog that is very independent and that is very reliable. Yes, yeah, so the brutes basically is just from the word brutal. So yes, that's the kind of dog you are getting. You are getting a brutal dog. Brutal dog. Yeah. Hence the name Brut Canario and I'm sure my dog lovers are loving the scenes right here with these beautiful powerful dogs right here now boss man i know you 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 didn't just start maybe you did not just start with the the presser canaries i want to know how your love and passion for dogs started how, how did the whole process start okay so like i mentioned earlier i've always been fascinated by dogs growing up and i usually used to walk through neighborhoods to see the dogs that people had in their compounds. You know, those days, you go and peep through the wall and see how the dog is going to react and all of that. So largely, uh, that's how I've been with dogs. Yeah, from infancy, growing up into adulthood. Uh, around 2009, uh, someone gifted me a dog. It was actually a crossbreed uh, between a German Shepherd and a Boa Bull. So that was kind of my first dog, my first official dog. Yes, so 
Uh, I had her for about eight years, and then unfortunately she passed away. So that is where I entered into the small business of uh, dog breeding. It hasn't really been a business for me. It's been more of a hobby with benefits, yes. So from there, uh, I got into Boabu. Yes, I had some few Boabus. And then uh, Peter Olympio, he did mention the Presa Canario to me. And he told me that because of the way I like big dogs and robust dogs, he sure I like the Presa Canario. So my first Presa Canario actually came from uh, Kelvin Amwa. Yeah, the dog trainer. He had this female presser called uh, Beastie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, a monster. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I got my first puppy from Calvin Amwa. And then subsequently, I got my next puppy from this male. And another female that I also came to own eventually. That is when this whole business of owning a dog and getting into the dog business started. But it has not fully been a business for me, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's been more of a hobby with benefit. I love the dogs, uh, I love the Presa Canario, and I don't ever see myself without having a Presa Canario. Wow. wow, this is beautiful dog lovers, and you can see this dog is all over me right here. Now, Bossman, um, you are into the Boa Bulls. <laughs> Whoa, I have time for you very soon, okay? Okay, so you are into the Boa Bulls. Um, what changed about the Boa Bulls? Why did you stop beating the Boa Bulls? So, uh, I went to see this dog uh, previously. She, he had a previous owner in Ghana, uh, Carol, Caroline. Uh, she used to live close by. So, I went to see him and immediately I was like, nah, I need to have one. As soon as I saw him, I was like, no way. I need to have a first canario. So, straight away, I started asking Peter Olympio where I could get one. And then, finally, for me, uh, Kevin Amo at the time had a letter. So, I got a female from him. Then that was it for me. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Dog lovers, I'm sure you're loving the conversation right here. The current location is Brute Canario. Brute Canario. And the location is East Legon Hills in the greater Accra region of Ghana. A kennel that is filled with Presa Canarios. And trust me, you're going to love today's episode. And very soon we'll get to my favorite part where we check out the dogs and all of that. Now, um, boss man, so getting the presser for the first time, how was the feeling like for you and how has the experience also been? <laughs> uh, getting the presser for the first time was just, I don't know, I just don't know how I can describe how it feels like to see something you are so passionate about and to actually get to own one. It, it's a feeling that you need to experience to understand. And getting a puppy, seeing it grow, seeing it grow so nicely. And then everyone comes around, they see your dog, and then they comment, uh, recommend you on how much you are taking good care of the dog and how good your dog is looking. And then it's, 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 just, it's just been an amazing journey. Uh, there have been some few challenges because uh, naturally these dogs are a bit stubborn. Uh, if you decide to own a presser canary, you should first of all get to know what you're owning. And they are not your typical social dog. But you can see these dogs are all over it. It takes a lot of work to get them to be this sociable. So uh, I think largely that is the challenge with keeping a presser canary. So it, it's been a long journey. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work to ensure that your dogs can meet others people and both both people and dogs and be able to flow with them the way you are seeing now yeah. this is beautiful i'm loving the dogs right here lovely presser canarios here now a boss man um, this is a breed that is not very common i even hardly get presser canarios on my show but then having the presser canario I know somebody is even hearing of the breed for the first time or seeing the breed for the first time. Can you give us a brief something about these dogs? Okay, so uh, these dogs originate from Spain, from the Canary Island of Spain. Uh, they were bred for three main purposes, uh, for protection or for guarding, for sheep keeping, and then unfortunately for dog fighting. Yes, so they tend to have that aggressive nature because of what they've been used for in the past. Yes, uh, they are like I mentioned, they are not your typical social dogs. 
they want to be independent and as such require a lot of socialization. Yes, uh, they come in different colors. As you can see, you have the phone, you have the brindle. The brindle comes, it comes in all forms of shape. It's possible to have uh, the white patches on the face, on the chest, on the paws, and it is normal. Uh, you also have the black. So largely, those are the main colors that you have. You have the phone, you have the brindle, you have the black, and they come in different shades. Yeah. And it's more like um, all of these colors, they sometimes have some patches of white. Patch and yes, on the chest, yes. Nice one, dog lovers. I'm sure you're, you're loving it right here at Brut Canario. And in case this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, I'll kindly urge you to kindly subscribe to our channel. This channel is all about dogs. Yes, we drop exclusive and amazing dog content. So just hit on the subscribe button and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. Bossman, I, I know once I'm here and you have the presser canaries, if I don't ask this question, my viewers won't forgive me. If somebody is looking to get a presser canario, what is the person to expect? Maybe somebody seeing the presser canario for the first time. And they are fascinated seeing this beautiful boy and girl here. What is the person to expect? Okay, so in the Fresa Canaria, you are going to have uh, probably the best friend that you ever have. Uh, but you need to do some work to get it to that point. Uh, you realize that uh, when we have the usually when we have the dog shows and there are some few presses around, they cannot socialize with the other dogs they tend to try attacking the other dogs and st other stuff like that, yeah. So that's the kind of dog you are getting. You are getting an aggressive dog uh, that is good with you and your family. Uh, if my boys were here, you see them all over the boys, especially the big one trying to climb on him and all of that. Yes, they are that sociable. So you need to do a lot of work to get it to that point. So if you are getting a presser canario, uh, basically you are getting an independent dog. A dog that uh, will be there for you and your family. A dog that you can call your very own friend and you can always rely on at all times. But you need to socialize the dog. Yes. That's the thing. So if somebody is looking for a guard dog, this is a perfect dog for guard. Perfect guard dog. Like I mentioned earlier, they were bred for three reasons. For guarding, for sheep keeping, and unfortunately for dog fighting. Yeah. So putting all of these three together, you know exactly what you are getting. One nice one. So for somebody who is owning a dog for the first time, somebody who has not owned a dog before and they want to get a presser, is it, is it advisable to get a presser? And if it is advisable, what are some of the tips you can give? Okay, so if you're a first time dog owner, you can still get a presser canario. The main thing has to do with whether or not you have enough time to socialize the dog. If you cannot socialize the dog or do not have time to play and get your dog to be around you and bond with you, then it's not advisable or it won't be advisable for you to get a presser canario. Uh, at maturity, they tend to be very independent and that usually will be from age two upwards. And if you have not properly socialized your dog by then, you are going to have some few challenges in the house. Yeah, so if you have time for the dog, you have time to socialize with the dog and bond with the dog, then the presser canary is the dog for you. Nice one. I'm sure these words coming from you has caught somebody. I know if you're not a presser canary lover, after this episode, you're going to love the presser canary as I'm at Brut Canario right now. Now, Bosman, let's talk about their, their, their feeding. Let's talk about their feeding. Do they consume a lot of food and how, how many times do you feed them and all of that? Okay, so I feed my dogs once a day. Uh, they do eat a lot like any other big dog. So you can expect to have some big uh, in your pocket when you have a presser canario. Uh, you can f largely feed them with any other thing that you feed any other dog. They don't have any special kind of food that they eat. They eat any other thing that every other dog eats. Uh, but uh, for those of us who have them in large numbers, we tend to have our own way of feeding them and that involves a lot of meat, uh, a few carbohydrates here and there, uh, maybe some few uh, cables, yeah, but largely they will eat just like any other big dog would. 
about meat, it can be chicken and kibble, so... Uh, yes, it can be chicken, but it has to be the chicken with the soft bone. Yes, you know, uh, if you give a dog a, a, a hard bone, it tends to break up, it tends to become brittle. Because they are brittle, they break up. And dogs do not chew on their food until they become smooth before they swallow. They probably will bite into it one or two and then will just swallow it. So if you have brittle bone in it, it can choke them and then that will become an issue that you would probably need a surgical procedure to correct. Nice one, dog lovers. I'm sure you're, you're, you're here. If you're hearing this for the first time, it's not advisable to be giving your dogs hard bone. That most people think that that's what dogs feed on. I'd like you to hit on that very well for me, boss. It, it is never advisable to give your dog hard bone because it can break and it can choke your dog. Yes, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy you brought this topic up right here now dog lovers will be getting to my favorite part very soon where we check out the dogs but then i'm still having a chit chat with the boss man right here with this lovely family and trust me i'm falling for the presser canario i think i'm already in love with them <laughs> irresistible trust me. you you won't see a presser canario and not be or fall in love with a presser canario no it it won't happen it looks like the I don't know, but I think when I see them, it's more like they, they have some similarities with the king also. Yes, so they, they all belong to the same family. Uh, they all belong to the Mastiff family. The Presa Canaries, the Boa Boo, uh, the Boo Mastiffs, all the dogs we call Bulldogs. They, they all belong to the Mastiff family. There are just some few differences that you see between the various breeds that uh, are under that family. Uh, the Presa Canario is largely muscular, so as you can see that's one of the main features between the differences between the Presa Canario and the Boa Boa or the Kenic also. They are largely muscular, they usually do not grow to be as big as the Boa Boa. Uh, the Corso probably will be uh, taller than the Presa Canario, but the Presa Canario will be bulkier than the Kenic also. Yeah. So those are just some of the few features that big head. Yeah, the blockhead. <laughs> As you can see from this boy, the girl and the other ones that I have at the back, yes. They are they are, they are just amazing dogs. Wow, dog lovers, that's the Presa Canario, also known as the Dogo Canario, right? Yeah. They they were previously called the Dogo Canario, but currently the name is Perro de Presa Canario. Yeah. Perro depressor canario right here and i'm sure my dog lovers are loving it so boss man and um, before i let you have your final words leave out your contact details and all i like to ask you what, what's the average litter size for these dogs okay so for every large dog you can have uh, a litter between one and probably 12. Uh, i have had a litter of 11. Uh, i've had a litter of two so the averagely you can be but largely it's between seven and eight yeah largely between seven and eight nice one and um let me leave you with this question too i think i missed it from the start why presser canarios and then do we see you breeding other dog breeds in the near future <laughs> Uh, why Fresa Canario? That, that's, that's a question that uh, I've had to respond to almost every time I mention the Fresa Canario because people just do not know about the breed and they always wonder why you go into a breed that is not known. Uh, I From the start, I didn't really have any reason to own a Fresa Canario. I saw a Fresa Canario and I knew I wanted one. So that was it for me. Uh, as I when I became the owner of a Presa Canario and I started spending time with my puppy then, uh, bonding, watching her grow, I realized that I had more than a dog. Uh, I had a companion, a friend, uh, I had a guard, you know, and she was everything to me. You get it. So if you are getting a Presa Canario, if you are going into a Presa Canario, I mean, you are going in for probably the best thing that you'll ever get. Maybe aside your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I, I didn't have a reason to go into 
Presser Canaries from the start. I just saw a Presser Canary and I knew I wanted to have a Presser Canary. And I ended up getting nine Presser Canaries. Uh, as, as we speak now, uh, I currently have four in the house. Some of them have gone out uh, because when they are about to leave, I take them out to people to help for me because of the stress in helping puppies, yes. So you see uh, dogs coming in and going out and that has been it for me. Uh, would I like to own any other dog or breed any other dog? Currently, I have uh, three Kenny Corsos. Uh, they come out more like a Presa Canaro to me than any of the other Mastiffs that are uh, in the family. Uh, however, they are not the same as the Presa Canario, and I, I'm not so sure how long our relationship is going to last. <laughs> I'm not sure how long our relationship is going to last. Uh, I think largely I will probably end up in the next year or two with solely Presa Canarios. Yes, uh, if I'm going to get any other dog, probably I'll get a Malinois. Uh, I'm thinking of getting one as a pet. Yes. Uh, I, I like the agility, uh, although I will still go for my Presa Canary over any other dog anytime, but I still think it will be a nice addition to have to the family. Uh, just for the case to have other views of what other breeds are in their system and how they look like and how they function and how they bond. Yeah. So if I'll get any other dog, I think I'll go for the Malinois. Yeah. I, I love that. I can see your love for dogs that have the power and all of that. Now, boss man, I know my viewers, they are just waiting for you to drop out your contact details, social media handles so that they can get into contact with you. So this is the power you drop out the contact details, social media and everything. Okay, so uh, on Instagram, uh, you can reach us on at Brut Canario. Uh, on Facebook, it's uh, Brut Canario Beast. Uh, on phone, uh, you can reach me on uh, 0558. Uh, 236 235 yes. dog lovers you know what to do you know what to do he's dropped the contact details follow them facebook brute canario beast on instagram brute canario the brute is spelled b-r-u-t-e and then you add the canario c-a-n-a-r I O link up with the boss man his contact details are on our screen give him a call send him a whatsapp get interactive now boss man you're getting to my favorite part where we check out the dogs yes but then i'd like you to say your final message to my my viewers it could be advice to fellow dog breeders upcoming dog breeders just anything okay so uh, from the little experience i've got it if you want to go into breeding of dogs you should first of all have a passion for the dogs uh, because dog breeding is not always a simple business let me put it that way uh, you can go for long periods without having any litter at all and you can go for extended periods with a lot of litters uh, if you are in the drought season and you do not have a passion for the dogs it becomes difficult keeping being committed to them and taking care of them the way you have to so I would always advise anyone who thinks about getting into the dog business to first be passionate about the dogs because you always need to cater for them, take good care of them, even when you're not getting anything from them before you think about the business side. That is what I've picked up from this little industry that I have at home. Yeah. Nice one, boss man. Thank you so much for your message. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, dog lovers, I'm sure you, you, you love this exclusive interview right here at Brut Canario Beast Kennel. I'm sure you loved it and you've really learned a lot too. Now, this is the part where we get to see the dogs. This is my favorite part. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Don't go anywhere. We get to my favorite part. We check out the dogs. Okay, so we had my favorite part where we check out some of the dogs at Brute Canario. And Bossman, can you introduce our lovely friends to my dog lovers? Okay, so this is Taliban. Uh, everyone calls him Talib. Uh, he originates from Poland. 
this is Baraka, uh, born and bred at Brut Canario. Uh, I think she's just about two and a half years. Uh, he is heading towards five. five yeah. Wow. What do you love about them? Well, as you can see, this is a usual thing we do every Saturday morning. We meet, we socialize, we play, we hug, we run around, we dogfight and all of that. So, <laughs> they help me relax. You know, uh, there are times you have a stressful day and you enter your house and immediately your dog makes you relax, makes you smile and you ease away the stress that you gathered throughout the day. That's, that's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Nice one, dog lovers. Now check out this beautiful family right here. So we check out the other dogs too. Okay, boss, and what about our lovely friend here too? Okay, so this is a new addition to the family. Uh, he's been with us for just about six months. Uh, his name is Aaron uh, from Hungary. Uh, we are yet to fully socialize him, so you can see the way he keeps turning. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, you need to do some work with the socialization. So it's something that we have to start working on. Yeah. Very, very beautiful dog right there. And wh what do you love about him, bro? Well, Iran is a character of his own. Uh, usually when you let him out and you come to the front porch, you come and see him lying here with his four paws uh, crossed, you know, just looking outside as if he knows what he's looking at. <laughs> as if he knows what he's looking at. And he, he, he's a lovely dog. Uh, he plays well with everyone. Uh, so far, I've not had any incidents with him and any other dog. Even bonds with the Mongols that I have in the house. Yeah, so that's how good he is. Love it. Check out Aaron right there. Very beautiful. And what I love about him is his beautiful blockhead right there. Wow. And there's this beauty right here. Boss man, can you tell us about this lovely girl here too? Okay, so uh, this is a bunny. Uh, I think she's officially my first pet breed dog. Yes, uh, she came from Serbia. Uh, she was imported for me by uh, Humble of Smart Dogs. Yes, uh, she, she's basically the most active dog I've ever seen, I've ever owned. She doesn't sit, not even in the cage. When she's out of the cage, she's just roaming all over the place. She's very playful plays with everyone who she needs to play with and she's also able to do what she has to do to keep the family safe so I mean she's just an amazing dog she's, and uh, one of these days I think she will have to partake in one of our dog shows because she has been in shows in Europe so I don't think I'll need to spend a lot of time to get her ready for her show so I'm sure probably in our next dog show you'll probably see her partaking in this dog from yeah, from Brute Canaro Beast. That will probably be our first ever participation in the dog show. Yeah, we are just looking forward to it. So, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And how old is she? Uh, she's going to five years. Uh, yeah, she probably will be the second oldest, no, the third oldest dog I have with me at the moment. Yeah, I think the other thing I probably should add is that we have to do responsible breeding. Uh, as much as possible, we should try to stay away from mixing the breeds up. Uh, you see, people would love to do uh, a cross between a Boa Bull and a Bull Mastiff, uh, a Kenny Corso and a German Shepherd and all of that. I, I don't think that is right for the animals that we claim to be our best friends. And as much as possible, we should try to stick to the various breeds that we have. Uh, also try to avoid uh, breedings that are not so healthy for the various breeds as if we can we should dilute the DNA that we have in the system. Uh, we should not keep to the same line breeding all the time. You know, it, it's, it's what it basically does. It is not completely bad in itself but what it does is that if there is a bad gene we stand a very high chance of uh, reproducing that bad gene in the subsequent generations that come. Yes, whereas if we breed with other bloodlines, we dilute the bad gene and 
equally the same effect for the good genes also. So, but we tend to look more at the negative effect than we do on the positive side. Yeah. So, I, I think that's the other thing I want to add to it. Nice one, dog lover. So this is the last dog we are introducing from Brute Canario. Today, the current location was the East Legon. The current location is East Legon Hills in the Greater Accra region of Ghana. And if you want to link up with Brute Canario Beast, just pick the contact details on our screen, link up with them for start service, for puppies, just link up with them. Their contact details are on our screen. And if this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, I'll kindly urge you to kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. And then you also follow us on all of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at GH Dog Blogger. In case you want to also link up with us, our contact details are on the screen 055 328 4056. 055 328 4056. Five, six. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Catch you another time. GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers.